Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to install Super ATV's cab heater on this Polaris General. So let's jump right in. The first thing that we're going to do is disconnect our lower radiator hose in order to drain the coolant out of our radiator. So we're just going to come right here to this clamp on the lower radiator hose. We're going to grab a hold of it. And you're going to want to have a bucket ready or something to catch all this coolant. Best thing I've found to do is just get you a big piece of cardboard or something that's going to help you soak it up. Obviously, we've got some coolant on the floor here. We're going to let this drain all the way out, and then we're going to proceed on to the next step. So while our coolant's draining, we're going to go ahead up top side and remove our hood from our machine. And we'll go ahead and just set this aside. And then we're going to start removing the upper portion of the dash. To do this, we're going to remove five push pins right up here on the top. We're gonna go ahead and open our door and remove the top push pin right here. Then we'll slide around to the opposite side. And we'll come right down through this pocket right here on the front fascia on the fender. And you'll see there's another push pin. We'll go ahead and remove that as well. And then on the opposite side. On the passenger side, you're gonna to wanna to remove the following hardware, you're going to remove the T40 screw located right here, this push pin, this push pin, and then the two push pins that are on the fender over here, located here, as well as down there. So we'll go ahead, we've already got these pop loose, so we'll pop the ones loose over here on the side of the machine. And then we can grab the top portion of our dash, pick up on it, pull this side panel away just a little bit and kind of pick up here. You may have to take a popper or a push pin removal tool and slide it up into the upper portion of the dash here and just kind of pick up on it to get it to pop out of the clips. And you can just slide it straight up, pull it down. And if it gets hung up on the opposite side, you may have to remove the hardware that goes down the seam of the fender here, just like we did on this side. So we're just gonna remove these two push pins. We should be able to slide our fender out enough to kind of snake the dash out just like that. Then we'll just take this upper portion of the dash and we'll sit it in the bed, and get it out of the way for now. Make sure that we keep track of all our push pins. Next, we're gonna grab our inch and a quarter hole saw bit that's gonna be provided in the hardware kit. And all we did was, is we screwed it onto the adapter. It'll come like this, you'll just thread it right on. And then you'll line up these holes with these pins. And you'll just thread this bottom nut in. You have them lined up. And just get those pins to go in there as far as you can. And there's gonna be an indention down here on the firewall. It's gonna look like it almost has two circles in it. The left side circle or the one that's closest to the inside of the machine, you're gonna to wanna to mark center on it. We've already done this, so we're gonna go ahead and drill our holes. So now we're just gonna get our drill bit right in the center. And just drill it out just like that. And then we're gonna take our bit and go directly below it and pop another hole. So there we go, we got our two holes drilled. We just wanna clean off any fragmentation. Take your finger and just kinda of peel it out of there. That way we can get our grommets installed. So with the grommet, if you'd like to, you can take a little bit of lubricant, kind of go around the outside of it to kind of help it go in. Slide it right into the hole here. And do the same thing for the top one. Next, we're gonna grab our instructions 
and go to the page where it has the two templates and we're gonna go ahead and cut those out and have them ready to go. Also, whenever you cut them out, I like to just put a little X right here, right in the center where you're supposed to mark. That way you can shove the tip of your marker through it and make your mark. Then we're gonna open up the glove compartment. Make sure there's nothing on either of the side rails right here. And we're gonna take this template. We'll go ahead and we'll get our marker ready to go. And we're just gonna slide it right in the position here. We'll go right down into this corner. Get it tucked up in there exactly how it's supposed to be. Make sure it's laying flat. Then just mark your hole. And do the same exact thing for your other hole here. Then you should have two marks right there. And you'll do the same exact thing with this one. You'll just slide it right down this rail on this side. Once you have your marks made, we're gonna go ahead and drill each of these holes out with a quarter inch drill bit. So next we're going to remove our ducting out of our hardware kit and we're going to cut a piece that is 23 and 5 eighths. Let's go through, just make a nice clean cut all the way around, just cut it right off. And here's our piece that's 23 and 5 eighths. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over here to the machine and we're going to route this piece down through the dash. and towards the passenger side floorboard. Next, we're gonna grab our elbow, our heater bracket, our heater, our elbow bracket, and then five of our Phillips head screws. Then we're gonna take our heater, slide it into our bracket here. And we're gonna go ahead and get our elbow installed here. And once we have our elbow started into our bracket, we're just gonna go through and get all of our screws started. Flip it over to the opposite side. We'll get all these screws started as well. We're gonna grab our elbow bracket here. And we'll just work it in the position. Just like that. Then we'll take our screw Get it started. And we'll go ahead and we'll fully tighten all the hardware for the bracket going to the heater as well. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our brackets that are gonna attach to the top portion of the heater bracket. We're gonna have a left bracket and then a right bracket. The way you can distinguish the two is that you wanna make sure that the angle right here is facing towards the rear. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our hardware here. It'll be the M6 bolts provided in the hardware kit. We'll just slide it right through the bracket and we'll take a flat washer, slide it on there as well as our M6 nut. Get the hardware started here. And we'll grab our right side bracket, do the same exact thing. Now, as you can see, you have some adjustment here with your brackets. I'm gonna set mine to about dead center in the adjustment, as well as the side to side. So, you really want your bracket to be back a little bit farther, that way all your controls and everything stick out. If you adjust it like this, it's gonna bring everything inward. So, we're gonna take it down as far as it'll go towards the back side, and then we're gonna kinda of get it centered up in the center of the adjustment there. Just put a wrench down here on the bottom side. Just how it is on the front. Just 
Same thing over here. So now we have our bracket installed and you may have to make adjustments whenever you get it installed in your machine, it just depends. We just like to go ahead and get it set at a point. We'll try sticking it in the machine. If it doesn't work, we'll have to take it back out and make some adjustments there. You can also leave these a little bit loose. The thing is they get kind of difficult to tighten up once you get the heater installed in the machine. Next, we're gonna grab our hose and we're gonna cut a section off of our hose that is approximately two and three eighths long. We got a mark there. What you can do is you can take a pair of side cuts. Just cut through, cut it. And they get a nice clean edge on it. I like to just take my razor knife. So now we have our piece cut. So we're going to go back here to the back side of the heater. We're going to slide it right onto this fitting. We're going to go ahead and grab one of our clamps. We'll slide it up here. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. Then we're going to grab one of our 90 degree elbows. You'll want to grab your clamp and go ahead and slide it up onto the hose here. We'll grab our 90 degree elbow. We'll make sure we get it all the way installed. Slid up in there as far as it'll go. Get it tightened down. Then we're gonna cut a piece that is approximately 17 and three quarter inches long. Grab another clamp and we'll slide it onto our hose here. And then we'll connect it to the fitting we just installed. We'll just go ahead and tighten the hose clamp up again. And we're gonna grab another elbow. the clamp. Go ahead and tighten it down out here on this end. Just like that. Then we're going to cut another piece of hose that is 19 and 11 sixteenths. We'll grab a clamp. And we're going to rotate the heater and we'll slide it right onto the lower outlet here. Then we're going to grab Another fitting here, another elbow. Now once we have all our hoses cut and installed, it's time to get the heater and heater bracket installed to the machine. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come up front to our bus bar and we're gonna connect our keyed on power source wire, which is our red wire and then our ground to the far left post and the center post. Slide it onto the post here. Let's we'll go ahead and put our nut right back on. Let's we'll connect our black wire to our center post on our bus bar. It's going to be our ground. Then once we've made our connections, we're going to go to the inside and we'll run our wires down and we'll get our cab heater installed and plug our harness in. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our cab heater and we're gonna slide it up to where we drilled our holes. And we'll take our M6 hardware provided in the hardware kit. Once we have all our bolts pushed through, we're gonna grab a flat washer as well as our nylock nuts. We're gonna put a flat washer on the thread of the bolt as well as get our nuts started. And once we have all our nuts started, we'll just go through and fully tighten all the hardware. And then our wiring harness that we previously just dropped down and through, we're gonna reach around on the bottom side of the heater. 
and make our connection just like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the slack out of our harness. We're gonna go right up here on top of the dash with one of the provided zip ties. We'll just go ahead and we'll tie it up and out of the way. And we'll cut the excess of our zip tie off here. Then we're gonna head down to the bottom. So we're just gonna take our hose that we installed the elbows on and just slide the fitting through the firewall, through that grommet. And then the piece of duct work that we previously cut we're gonna install it to the back of the defrost elbow here. So like, what I like to do is I like to kind of oval out the ducting as much as possible. It just makes it go on that much easier. Make sure it's all the way spread out as far as pulling up on it. And get it kind of shaped into an oval like this. And we'll just kind of feed it up towards the top where it's supposed to be. And just come on the back side back here. And once you have it slid all the way on, you'll just secure it with a zip tie. It's provided in the hardware kit. And cut off the excess of your zip tie. Next, we're gonna cut three pieces of ducting to 15 and three quarter. We're just gonna go through and make our cut on the ducting. Again, we're using a razor knife and I'm just gonna follow the roll of the ducting. We're gonna get it to where it's like this right here. And we're just gonna take our side cuts just cut it off. So there's one 15 and three quarter piece. Cut it off. And then one last 15 three quarter piece. This one right here. So there's our three 15 and three quarter pieces. Now we're going to cut a piece that is seven and seven eighths. So we have our three 15 and three quarter pieces. Then we have our seven and seven eighths piece. And now we're going to grab the upper portion of our dash. And we're going to go to these two locations right here, as well as here. And we're going to grab our hole saw. We're gonna find out where we wanna make our hole at. I'm just gonna go right here in the center on this spot. Just drill right here. In the I'm just gonna kinda of go through, clean this upper dash off, get all the plastic shavings off of here and all the rough edges. And we're gonna grab our vents come provided in the hardware kit. And we're just gonna slide these right down and into place. We'll come over here to the other side, take our vent, do the same exact thing. Now we're gonna grab both of our Y fittings out of the hardware kit. And we're gonna take a 15 and three quarter inch piece of ducting here. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to get these to slide together, so you can just take something and kind of help it. Just lip it right over top. Just wanna make sure that you get them all the way on there though, that they're fully fully seated. So that one's all the way on there. We're just gonna take a zip tie and run it right around. We're gonna take another 15 and three quarter. Do the same thing, just kind of Get it slid up and then just keep spinning it to get it to go all the way on. And we'll secure this one with a zip tie as well. We'll cut off the excess. And then right here in this location, we'll take our seven and seven eighths piece that we cut. Just kind of apply some pressure forward and spin it until it lips up on top. So then we're just gonna take our zip tie, wrap it right around. off and we're gonna attach a Y fitting up here. Zip tie. We're gonna take our last 15 and three quarter piece. We're gonna slide it. As 
So what you have should look just like this right here. And we're gonna connect these and we wanna make sure that this hose is going towards the driver's side. And we're just gonna slide these right onto the bottom sides of our vents. And once you got it all the way on there, just grab one of your zip ties. Go ahead and secure it, just like that. We'll go over here to this vent. Do the same exact thing. That one slid on nice and easy, so we're just gonna go ahead and take our zip tie. Get it secured on there. So now what you should have, the driver's side of your dash, you should have your 15 and three quarter piece hanging towards that way. And then right here will be your T. And this is where your ducting is gonna connect off the bottom side of the heater. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our hole saw again and we're gonna drill a hole right down and below where the key switch is. So if you go down to right here, there's actually a small indention in the plastic. Once we drilled our hole through, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the edges. And we're gonna grab our last vent. We're just gonna slide it right into the hole. Then we're gonna get our machine off the ground and head up to the front and start cutting our radiator hoses. And grab our adapter fitting here. And we're gonna go to our lower radiator hose. We're gonna find a good spot on our hose and we're gonna cut right in the center of where we need to be. So looks like I can cut right here in the center and I can slide this side on. And then if I need to trim any, I wanna trim on the opposite side. That way I can get the angle correct. There'll probably be some residual coolant left in your line there. There is an R. So we got our hose cut. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fitting. We're gonna slide it in to the hose on this side as well as this side here, just like that. Make sure we haven't kinked our line anywhere. We haven't, looks like that is gonna be a good spot for us. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our hose clamps. We're gonna put it right here. Make sure we get it nice and tight. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, one of our pieces of hose that we have left over and we're gonna slide it through the grommet in the firewall. I like to just slide enough through that I can easily get my hands to where they need to be to make the connection. And then I'll pull it back through and then cut off the excess and trim it the size to go onto the adapter. We're gonna go ahead and take our clamp, slide it up onto our hose. And fully tighten our hose clamp. like that and then we'll go back out here to the front then we're gonna mark where we need to make our connection at where we need to cut our hose down it needs to be cut down right about here we take one of our clamps slide it onto the hose and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten up our clamp so next we're gonna come over to the driver's side. We went ahead and disconnected our shock off the top and kind of moved it out of the way. But we're gonna follow our hose all the way down past the curve. The way you can judge where you need to make your cut is gonna be where your adapter lays out at. We'll just go ahead and take our adapter and we'll lay it just like this. We're gonna wanna cut right in the middle. Kind of make a mark where we're gonna make our cut. And we're just gonna reach up in here with our blade. And once we've got our cuts made, we'll just go ahead and take our hose clamps and slide them over the hose. And we'll go ahead and we'll slide the inside on first because it's kind of the harder one to get to. We'll take the outside portion of the hose here, slide it all the way up into place. And then we'll go ahead and we'll tighten down our hose clamps. So we've got our hose clamps tightened down, got it laid in place. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our other hose coming out of the firewall. We're just gonna slide it right through this grommet. So we're gonna grab our hose that we just ran through our firewall. And we're gonna take it, slide a hose clamp on it. And we're gonna get it lined up with our 90 degree fitting, our barb fitting here. 
We'll just go ahead and tighten it up, tighten our clamp up. And then we're gonna raise our machine up and head back outside. Once we have our hose through, we're just gonna feed it over towards our connection here. We can slide it on there, we'll check it. We may end up trimming down just a little bit. So once we have our hose connected, we'll just go through with our hose clamp. Go ahead and tighten it up. Just like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our lower hose clamp. The factory one that goes right here on the hose. Then we'll just wanna make sure all our hose clamps out here are tight. Everything's in position. Looks like everything is good to go out here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our passenger side wheel and tire and driver side shock. So now we're gonna grab the upper portion of our dash with all our hoses and duct work installed to it. You just wanna make, take this time to double check, make sure all of your zip ties are extra tight because once you reinstall everything, it's kind of difficult to get back in there to get it all tightened back up. So we're just gonna take it, slide our dash out towards the front and we're gonna take this hose, it's gonna to go to this vent right down here. And we're gonna start routing it how it needs to go. So it's gonna go straight down, back and behind this bar on the dash. And then this fitting right here is gonna to connect to the hose that's attached to the back side of the heater. I like to go ahead and get the hose hooked up that comes off the back side of the heater first. Make sure whenever I get it connected, I double zip tie it because it's gonna have a lot of tension and a lot of force pulling against it trying to pull it out. It's a little bit more difficult once you're down inside of the dash rather than being on the bench. There's barbs on this Y fitting and you wanna make sure that you get over all of them. That's what's actually gonna secure it to the Y fitting here. So we've got that connection made there. So now we're just gonna kind of start feeding everything down all together as one, making sure that this hose, this duct work that's going over here to the driver's side is in its proper place. And we are running a flip windshield bracket here, so we are gonna kind of have to get our vent slid around it. It'll just kind of slide right past it like this. Just kind of push it up and out of the way so you don't have to disconnect it completely. And that way it'll just lay right back into position whenever we're ready to get it reinstalled. We're just gonna start kind of sliding our dash and everything back into place as we go down. Just move from side to side, making sure that we're lining everything up properly. So in order to get your driver's side vent hooked up with your duct work, what you're gonna have to do is take a popper tool Something that's not gonna tear your plastic up and you'll just wanna pop this center section out. You can just go right here, right here, anywhere that you can get your push pin or any of your, your tool, your screwdriver in there. It'll just pop right out, just like that. And you can take your hand and stick it straight down in through here, hook it up and then put a zip tie on it. Now you're just gonna go through and reinstall your push pins and fasteners, securing your dash in place. So now we're gonna take our coolant. We caught a lot of it, so we're gonna go ahead and dump this in first. So we've got our radiator full, now we're gonna go over here to our reservoir. We'll go ahead and fill it up as well. We'll put our radiator cap back on. Next, we're gonna grab the provided blue pliers that are gonna come in the kit. And we're gonna go over here to the inlet hose on the radiator and completely pinch it off. Once we pinch it off, we'll slide this down so that way it can't spread back apart. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into our machine here. We're gonna fire it up and we're gonna check for leaks at first to make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere in the system. And then we're gonna rev it up to 3000 RPMs and let it continually run until it overheats. So we're just gonna go ahead, walk around the machine right now, make sure we don't have any coolant leaking anywhere. Look at all our connections. Everything's looking good, feeling good here. Take a look on the inside. 
Everything looks good there too, so we're gonna go ahead and rev the engine up to 3,000 RPMs until it goes to overheat. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna watch the temperature here. All right, so our fan just kicked on. So we're gonna remove our plier. And we're gonna let it run until the fan turns off and cools the machine back down. We're gonna shut the machine down and then we're gonna check all our coolant, check all our fluids, double check for leaks and we're gonna let the machine sit for a while. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna continue bleeding the system until you get all the air out. Once you've done that, you're all good to go. If you're still having issues after an elongated period of time of trying to get the air out of the system, what I recommend is to jack the front of the machine up. What we're gonna do if we can't get this one bled pretty quick, we're just gonna back it up on the lift, lift the front end up that way, your radiator's the highest point, and it's gonna to try to push the air all the way up to the top of the radiator. So. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna go through, double check everything, check our coolants, continue bleeding the system, and that's how easy it is. Install Super ATV's heater on this Polaris General. For more information on this heater or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.